antes de entregar a cada um pessoalmente este diploma, apenas algumas palavras para, no fundo, encerrarmos dignamente e com... <laughs> All right, so I've had a lot of questions about my time up at the university. People ask me how was the classes uh, learning Portuguese up in uh, the University of Coimbra? How did uh, things uh, turn out? How did uh, how did I learn? Did I learn, learn, did I learn things from, from the class? And uh, basically, would I suggest the uh, intensive Portuguese uh, language course at the university? So I figured I would uh, discuss this a little bit and talk about the pros, cons, and basically just to give you an expectation if you were considering to learn Portuguese up at the university. So what I, figure I'll go out, uh, start off with, um, would be, um, you know, kind of the pros. What, what are some of the great things about the program? And uh, one of the things that I found excellent about the program was that there was a small class size for me. It wouldn't necessarily be this way for every single class, but it was something that uh, I had only six uh, other students in, so the learning environment and individuality that was uh, allowed in the class was immense. Uh, for like the A2 class, uh, I heard that they had uh, significantly more people. I think they had like 30 people in their class. So uh, while I only had six, uh, there are uh, other classes that would have significantly more. And I was in the A1, just to be clear. So I'm. this is just an entry level. So <coughs> from... Um, Going to the university uh, with only six students, it was great. We also ended up having three different teachers, which is basically three different um, classes. So like I had a gram uh, grammar class uh, where the teacher was teaching us all about the grammar and how to speak the uh, language properly. Then there was an oral and uh, uh, writing class. Uh, it's oral e uh, uh, so they get uh, was being able to uh, speak the language properly and write write properly is kind of their thing with that uh, <clears throat> and then there was a uh, laboratorial uh, laboratory where I was able to learn uh, through listening in a computer lab which that uh, was uh, immensely helpful because before listening to Portuguese uh, to me, it sounded like a Slavic language. Other people say it sounds like they're speaking uh, Russian to me. And, and other times, you know, I'm listening to them speak and there's like, shh, 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 shh. and I'm like, <laughs> How, are you shushing me or are you actually saying words? So uh, being able to listen to the uh, words up close with headphones in, helped me really understand the words that were being spoken. So uh, having three different aspects of learning was, uh, was great. I've never had a language course like that. So I've had Spanish courses at the college level, I've taken four of them. So I do have an understanding of like Roman uh, languages, you know, uh, romantic languages. So uh, I, but I never had like three different teachers teaching a subject so it was quite nice to have you know multiple people to have different perspectives uh, so that was the first uh, pro about it um, or second I guess so like first one being that it was small class size two that you had three different uh, professors teaching at different times uh, and you know it was it's great to have an environment like that. I felt like it was something that 
uh, helped facilitate a great learning experience in, uh, at the university, uh, especially since it was an intense course and we only had like uh, a month to get this done. Um, so I guess that kind of brings us up to the cons. And uh, what would, uh, obvious con is that it was a short class. Uh, how much information can somebody actually learn in a period of 30 days, which was 18 classes. Uh, yeah, so like the biggest con was that they, they were, you just weren't able to learn enough uh, to cram enough information in your head in 18 days. So yeah, so like 18 days is way too quick to to, to cram so much information. Um, yeah, so just learning so much uh, in there. And then, you know, like uh, if you already know a little bit about uh, conjugation of like European languages, you know that there's like past tense, present tense, preterite, things of that nature. But uh, being able to do and learn all of the different verb tenses, the different uh, words for for everything, vocabulary, uh, it, it's a lot. It, for an intensive course, it's a lot. And they, and they expect you to not be able to cram this amount of uh, knowledge into your system, but they just throw it to you and hope that uh, as much of it would stick. And the, the important thing is like when you're in a class like this in an intensive course is like every day you got to be practicing. Uh, and I, you know, I'm in at the university for like uh, eight hours a day. And uh, you know, if I, when I'm not there, I'm practicing. So it's like, it's all Portuguese all the time. Uh, so it's, uh, it's quite intense and it, uh, it is a very uh, exhausting as a result. Um, and I guess the part of the pro of it being so short is that you'd like learn so much uh, in such as a short amount of time. So, um, now, like, I don't want to harp on like uh, the negatives about it, but uh, uh, yeah, like have, being able to um, retain as much information as they put out there was difficult. So uh, to be able to uh, help out with, with that, you really have to um, get involved with the Portuguese community and, and then try to use the, this knowledge that you're learning in real life situations. And even if it's completely stupid, uh, you know, that's, uh, you, you can't like uh, be afraid to make fun of yourself or make a fool of yourself in front of people when you're learning. So it's uh, just being able to say stuff in like a restaurant that might not have anything to do with what you're uh, wanting to do with uh, with buying food at like uh, there, so they uh, might be talking about, oh, is it is it raining today? Oh no, it didn't, it didn't rain today. <laughs> so, so they're like, it might be a little bit confused, but then you know, being able to uh, correct the situation also after that is uh, is part of a uh, part of the experience that that I had uh, in there. So like. Uh, I, I definitely didn't have uh, a problem making fun of myself and getting some good laughs uh, at my own expense uh, as I'm learning. Uh, but uh, yeah, so like one of the uh, things is that we need to uh, think about when we move uh, into a new country that to learn the language in order to uh, better acclimate with the, the culture. So like for me, like. Uh, another pro to like this class was I, it was an intensive course and I had just uh, uh, landed basically in uh, Coimbra. So uh, I didn't have much uh, time to not speak uh, Portuguese. So jumping right in uh, is, uh, was great for me to be able to get a base course, base knowledge of the uh, the language of Portuguese so like uh, you know 
some of the stuff I was saying was just really basic to like kind of facilitate a conversation to get whatever I want, but I sounded like a complete butthead. So through this knowledge and in one month, at least I'm able to uh, come off as being a little bit more polite. Uh, so that that's definitely one of the the positives that I that that's in there too. It's that uh, I was able to gain enough knowledge to the, to kind of you know not sound so harsh and uh, brash when asking for something when they're when like somebody in Portuguese is trying to do something for me. So it's uh, you know just the simple words of apodia, Korea, um, saying it in that context that uh, is a little bit more polite than just saying Coca-Cola por favor or Pastel de Nada uh, por favor. <laughs> and it's a little more fun in the, the fact that like I have a little bit more um, uh, words that I can use. It's not as, as boring. So uh, it's definitely much more interesting. Um, so, yeah, so those were, are the pros and cons that I would say were in the course. Uh, so, you might be wondering, would I recommend the uh, intensive course for uh, students? And I, for me to say that I would recommend it, I'd, I think it's, uh, it's one of those things where I'd have to know the knowledge and understanding of the individual because for the most part like if you don't have if you're just an English speaker and don't don't know any other language an intensive course uh, it's only like 18 days I highly recommend not taking that course it's uh, there's too much stuff to learn there's too much different uh, um, things in the grammar rules for you to to understand and uh, it, it, it's going to be challenging. You're going to be frustrated for this whole month. So, uh, and, and learning it, it can be a frustrating experience just in itself. But uh, I, th I think it's a little bit too much for somebody that's coming in completely raw, trying to learn the language. I, I did. I, 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 <laughs> I did have the um, background of Spanish in my belt, and that helped. And and hurt uh, for me uh, and as I said earlier I, I had uh, four semesters of college Spanish so I, I did have some of the similar uh, rules and some some of the same um, uh, vocabulary or similar vocabulary uh, but at the same time having this vocabulary was a hindrance in that like I, I'm thinking that uh, certain words are exactly the same in Portuguese and that's just not the not the case uh, you know you hear leche leche and, and also like some of the pronunciations uh, might be similar but it's not uh, precisely exactly the same so it's just uh, it's still a little bit of a learning curve so if somebody has um, an understanding of Spanish or it's completely 100% fluent in Spanish it probably be okay to take like the A1 course I know that there were some uh, Spanish speaking students that found the A1 course too easy so they went ahead and bumped up to the A2 and they took the, they were taking the intensive with me uh, so like with the A2 they found that extremely difficult so uh, if you're a Spanish speaker thinking oh I won't take an A1 course and I'll go up to A2. You might, you might want to think about it, um, but I, I'm sure that you'll end up doing okay. Um, but uh, uh, would I do this again? I, I would absolutely take the intensive A1 course again. It was extremely challenging. I passed the course, which is great. Um, I, and I learned a, a significant amount in this class, but uh, it, yeah, I think somebody that uh, and doesn't have a great understanding of like, Spanish, uh, they would have a very, very hard time jumping right into this. Uh, also, um, 
Uh, if you do have a little bit of uh, a background in Spanish and you know, um, you know a lot of the grammar rules and different types of conjugation, while the conjugation and the vocabulary is going to be different, I, I think that it would help you. Uh, would I recommend a class, a Portuguese class up at the university? I 100% would uh, uh, recommend people go up to the University of Coimbra and learn Portuguese. Uh, I, what I would suggest though is to take the classes that are during the semesters. Uh, so like uh, I'll be going back up there for the A2 certification and that is uh, from September to December. So instead of it being like 18 <laughs> days of classes, I'll end up uh, spreading these all out from uh, over three months. So like, basically what they were doing like in a month I'll be doing in three months uh, so I'll be able to really gain the knowledge and uh, and have the, some of the other assets that uh, those classes uh, have and I'll also be doing a similar stuff is that I'll have a grammar teacher I'll have a oral and a writing teacher and I'll also have a laboratory teacher so I'll be doing similar type thing it'll just be for a longer period of time uh, and I haven't taken the class so I could be completely wrong recommending this to you but I will do like another video to update you on how that class went and uh, I can compare and contrast doing an intensive course versus doing a uh, course that uh, is over a semester long to kind of uh, see how how things go uh, and I know it'll be a little bit faster in some ways uh, because there's more more material that I'll go over than, than what we went into. Um, but yeah, so that's kind of my update on that, but I'll go ahead and uh, take you uh, uh, to some other stuff that's going on tonight. We have a dinner with the uh, with uh, other students in A2 and B1 and C1, so it's gonna be kind of uh, a neat experience uh, having dinner with other people and having a conversation with them. So yeah, uh, so let's uh, let's go ahead and let's uh, walk over there and see how uh, how that all uh, all goes. So all right, uh, I'll talk to you then. All right, so I was uh, thinking about something else that I forgot to say about another con that was uh, with the. Uh, intensive class during the summer. It is summer. It's extremely hot. We had 112 degree temperatures during the, uh, some of the classes. There is, uh, during the summer, there's also fire season. So uh, when you have fires around here, it uh, ends up going up through the university. And so if you have asthma or something, it'd be something that would be uh, an issue. So that was another con. But I am uh, heading over to this dinner. So we'll get there here shortly, I promise. Uh, but yeah, that's uh, another thing that just crossed my mind that I thought about. That's Thank you to my friends. <laughs> so I am uh, here trying out Squid for the first time with a bunch of the international students with uh, Coimbra University. We're having a fabulous time. I just figured that I would go ahead and share a little bit of the experiences that I'm having here in Coimbra with you. And uh, well, let's see where this night takes us. This could be a really fun night, all right? All right, we had a fabulous dinner tonight. Ended up uh, uh, having some squid, which you saw there, and uh, got to meet some of the other students here at the university that were doing different courses 
uh, with the, that, that were intensive courses this summer. So it was really a crash course for a lot of us in different ways. Uh, some of these were, uh, we were basically at the bottom of the class, like the, or like the A1 class is kind of like the, you know, the lowest tier, but the, we had like A2, B1, uh, B2, C1 students in here. So it's kind of nice to get their perspective of the different programs from an intensive course level. I was talking to some of the professors here about different uh, programs that are going on in the fall. So I'm going to be kind of looking at those type of things. So if, the, if you're interested in language, uh, especially uh, Portuguese, uh, I'll try to uh, incorporate some of the words that I learn in these programs um, in, in my videos. And uh, I plan on going to the university this uh, fall. It's a longer course uh, that is not uh, as intensive so it won't be as aggressive and throwing so much <laughs> uh, into my brain so we'll see how that goes so if you haven't hit the subscribe button hit the subscribe button uh, follow me on this journey until then ate logo